we're here. Yeah! So, uh, welcome. Welcome. And welcome to everyone joining us uh, today online uh, to the first gathering of St. Bernard's in Whistler. We are gathered here, a small group of people who have been praying and discerning and dreaming about a, a new thing in Whistler. And so thank you for joining us and being part of it. And I, I just, I ask for your prayers for us and for Whistler. Um, it, we've felt it already and it's just such an appreciated uh, gift that you give to us. So we have a little simple liturgy, a little prayer for today. And so I really hope that this is a gift for you, that you're able to set aside a little time today, take a deep breath, and just spend a little time with yourself and with God. So let's take a few deep breaths. And I welcome you in the name of God. And we are here today on the traditional and unceded territory of the Squamish and the Lillooet nations. And now we will hear and meditate upon Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil he will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you're coming in from this time on and forevermore. Now we listen to the words of Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The rain's so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> so I think we all know here, but for those who don't, St. Bernard was a 12th century archdeacon with oversight for parts of the Italian Alps. During his ministry there, he identified a need in the area. He saw that these treacherous mountain passes were all too often deadly for travelers passing through them. So he set up the two St. Bernard hostels in the passes, as well 
as gathered the monastic communities that would operate them. By doing so, he left a centuries-long legacy of hospitality and providing sanctuary, a place where people could quite literally lay down their burdens and rest. Rest, I think, is underrated. We are really good at filling our time, working or grinding or whatever you call it. And I'm grateful for the movements in our society that are pushing back at this, at seeing ourselves and others as productivity machines. Religious communities are no strangers to operating in this way, unfortunately. Always doing more and more, so much to do and get done. However, rest is holy. Rest is a spiritual practice, and we can look to our tradition, our sacred stories, to back that up. One story from Genesis in the Hebrew scriptures that we like to tell shares of God making the world, which culminated, saw its completion in a day of rest, God's rest. What can we claim from this? That rest is baked into the world, that it is baked into us. This is also reflected in the Ten Commandments, ten ways to love God and our neighbors better, where it calls for a weekly rhythm of rest, the Sabbath. Other laws talk about letting the land lie fallow, letting it rest and recuperate. Rest is modeled to us by Jesus himself, a person who did a lot. He got a lot done in his <laughs> life, but who seems to be remembered in the Gospels as often getting away from the crowds, finding time for himself and his close friends, resting. We tell one particular story that I love in three different versions in the Gospels of Jesus calming the storm. But remember, in each of those three different versions, Jesus started out asleep in the boat. And today we hear the invitation to rest in Jesus' words, come to me, come to me. We hear in these words, Jesus' heart, which is for those who are weary and burdened. And his desire for lay, to lay down those things that are uh, weighing us down and crushing us. My guess is that all of us could use some rest right now. It's been quite a time. And I know that I have been carrying all sorts of things around grief and anger and anxiety and fear. My days have been full of many new and different tasks and commitments and thoughts and feelings that after a time begin to feel like they weigh me down more and more. Many of them are even good things they're helpful. I like them. <laughs> However, we still need to rest. We need to lay them down from time to time. I hope that this new community that is being formed may be formed by the heart of Jesus, who desires rest for the burdened, and inspired by the spirit of St. Bernard to provide sanctuary in the mountains. If there is something you could do today to honor St. Bernard, to honor God, to honor yourself, I think it might be to rest. And so I invite you to find a moment in your day to rest, to lay your burdens down, even if just for a little bit. I don't know what that looks like for you. For me, it is the deep breath before prayer. It is that loving invitation to my own body and mind and spirit to relax and let go of the tension that it can let go of and imagining myself being surrounded and upheld by the love of God. I pray that you may have holy rest today, my friends. Amen. 
And now we offer our prayers for ourselves and for the world. And so I'll just say a, a category and I invite you to, to think of those things or name those things, what you are upholding in prayer, those people you're upholding in prayer. So let us pray. Let us offer our prayers of thanksgiving. For the rain and for the sunshine. water and trees. Those we love and those who love us. invite your prayers for the world, for the places that need our prayer. For those places that are still heavily affected by COVID-19. great inequality that exists. I invite your prayers for those people that you know that might need a little prayer, a little strength, a little comfort, a little peace. Invite your prayers for the church, for the beloved community, and particularly for this new thing happening here in Whistler. siblings in Christ upholding us in prayer. And finally, I invite your prayers for yourselves. gather up all our prayers together by saying together the 
this prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now my friends here in person and those joining us online, go in peace. Go in love, go in joy, go and rest. And the blessing of God, who is lover, beloved, and love be with you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We did it. Our first prayer in Whistler at St. Bernard's. And just a little uh, advertisement. <laughs> if you happen to be in Whistler this summer or know someone in Whistler who might be interested in joining us, we have a couple uh soft launch mid-month services that will be happening and right now they're scheduled for june 18th at noon and july 15th at 11 a.m and if you're interested in those in joining us for that please uh reach out to saint john the divine's office and we will connect you we would love to have you with us so uh be well god bless <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs>